Hi, I'm Sean with Catalina Rug, and in this video, we're gonna go over how Persian rugs are made. So we'll be talking about the anatomy of Persian rugs and their construction, and I know that in a lot of videos, I like to go over the different types of rugs, the designs, colors, and I like to give you decoration tips. But in this video, we're gonna go to the micro level and talk more about the components and how a Persian rug is actually put together and what makes up a Persian rug. And so with that, we're gonna be first going over the structure of the rug. So we'll go over all the major components that make up the rug. Then we'll start talking about the foundation of the rug, so we'll get into more details about the foundation. And then we'll be talking about the, the pile of the rug, because the pile is the part that you could walk on and see, and I think it's important to talk about how the pile is created. And specifically, we'll talk about the two different types of knots that are used to create the pile. And then we'll talk a bit about the edges of the rug because if you notice, the edges of Persian rugs look a little bit different from the rest of the pile. And then finally, we'll talk about the fringes of the rug, which are at the very end, at both ends of the rug that look like tassels. That's actually the foundation, which we'll talk more about in detail. So if you're curious to learn about how Persian rugs are made and all the different components that make up a Persian rug, then I invite you to stick around and all that is coming up now. All right, so now let's get into it. So first, uh, as mentioned, we're going to go over the main components that make up the Persian rug. And here, I believe this figure is going to really allow us to visualize the different components. So we're going to do things a little bit differently here. I'm going to share my screen and explain to you using these figures. So starting off here, this figure pretty much sums up the major components. And starting off with A, you can see that this right here is the warp of the rug, which is one of the major components of the foundation. This is the part of the rug that runs vertically. So it goes from the bottom end of the rug to the top of the rug and is one of the first things, or it is the first thing, it is the first component that's laid out on the loom for the rug to start being woven. So first they lay out the uh, warp, which is the vertical component of the foundation. Then, and we're gonna get more into that shortly. And then we have the weft, which is right here. You can see it running horizontally in and out of the warp. And uh, if you notice that there's a weft between the knots, so, which we're gonna talk about shortly as well. So we have weft here, we have weft here, and then there'll be another set of weft here. And it could be a single or double, which we'll talk about shortly as well. But uh, what you should take away here is that the weft and the warp are two of the major components of the foundation. And then what we have are the knots. So here you can see uh, knots that are tied around the warp, which is the foundation. So there they are tying around the foundation. Now, this is the part of the rug that we could visually see. It's also called the pile of the rug. And of course it could be made out of different material, which we'll get into such as wool, cotton, or sorry, uh, wool and uh, silk or silk and wool. And this is uh, basically thousands and thousands of knots that are put together that really make up the pile of the rug. And then we have um, the edge or the overcast of the rug, you can see here. And basically this is the, the left or right side of the rug where the edges are. And you can see that it is made up of um, wrapping around uh, around the edge foundation of the rug, which we'll uh, get into more details about, but you can kind of see how that's made over here. This is the, the edge of the rug. And then we have the fringes of the rug right here, which is really a continuation of the warp, but this is the part of the warp that you can actually see. So this is kind of the tassel, the, you know, the white stuff that sticks out of the top and bottom of the rug. These are the fringes, which is really the foundation that sticks out. So we'll talk more about that. And then finally, we have the kilim section, which is over here. And this is basically uh, the extra weft that's put on the rug at both ends of the rug to tightly secure 
the rug together at both ends, and we'll talk more about that shortly as well. So these are all the major components of how a Persian rug is made, and these are the components that make up the rug. So we'll start now getting into each of these in more detail. All right, so now that we've done an overview of the major components of the rug and what makes up the rug, let's get into the foundation. So the foundation of the rug, again, is made up of the warp and the weft. And the first, let's focus on the warp. So with the warp, you can see it here again, running vertically, and it goes from the bottom of the rug to the top of the rug. And you could think of it as really the spine of the rug. So here we can see in this picture where the weavers are setting the loom. And the first thing they do is they set up the warp of the rug, the foundation of the rug here. Uh, when it comes to the materials, uh, typically you're going to find that a lot of warps are going to be made from cotton, but there's also, of course, wool, especially when it comes to tribal rugs or older Persian rugs. And then when it comes to the higher knot density rugs, silk and wool rugs, you're going to find that some of them are going to have silk uh, warp, so silk foundation. So generally, when we say uh, foundation of the rug, uh, one of the components is going to be the warp of the rug, as you can see here, attached to the loom, and it's the first thing that's set. And then we have the weft, which is the component that the horizontal component of the foundation. And again, you can see it running through the warp here. And uh, here in this picture, this this is the killing section of the rug, and this is the warp, but the weft would be running again horizontally through the uh, through the warp um, this way. So this kind of allows us to a little bit visualize what it's going to look like. Now, when it comes to the weft, there is uh, two different types of weft. There's single and double. Those are two major com categories, and we're going to get more into that now. All right, so now let's do the comparison of single wefted rugs with double wefted rugs. And we'll start with single wefted, and we'll also look at this figure over here on the right and this picture on the left. So you can see here visually that when you have a single wefted rug, this is the warp of the rug running vertically, and here's the weft running horizontally. So with the single wefted, there's going to be one single weft tied from one side of the rug to another, one side of the foundation to another, and then you're going to have a row of knots put in. So the weaver first ties the, the, the weft through the warp. So they do that with a single one, and then they start putting the knots in. You can see that here. And then they put, they come back across with the single weft across the knots. And then again, they tie the row of uh, knots across, and then they come back again with the, the weft. So this is visually how this a uh, single wefted rug looks like at the micro level. And in order to see what it looks like, if you uh, want to check the type of rug you have or a, a rug that you're interested in, uh, if you look at the back of the rug, you could uh, tell that a rug is single wefted, wefted usually by noticing this kind of zigzag white dot pattern that shows up in the back of the rug. So you can see that there's only one weft, and then you can see these white hex showing here in the different rows. So this is what happens when you have a single wefted rug. You're going to see basically through the, the knots and you're going to see the pile of the rug when you're looking uh, from the back of the rug. So this is one way to be able to tell if your rug is single wefted or double wefted. And this technique of single wefted is generally seen in a standard practice in the greater Hamadan area. So this includes a lot of the Kurdish tribal rugs, the Sena rugs and Hamadan rugs and Karaja rugs, Mehraban and Bakhtiari rugs. They are usually gonna have this single wefted construction. All right, now here we're gonna look at a double wefted construction. And basically, we're going to take a look at another figure and picture to be able to visualize it. So you can see again that the weft is running uh, horizontally across, but here we have two wefts running across. So basically, what the weaver does is runs the weft across um, the warp, and uh, they come back across again over and under. 
and then they tie a row of knots, as you can see here, and then again, they tie uh, one single weft and another weft, and then you have double weft. So basically, uh, two wefts, single knot, uh, or a row of knots, and then two wefts, and then row of knots, and over and over and over. So when you have this type of double wefted construction, what you can expect is that when you're looking at the back of the rug, especially if it's very finely woven and tightly woven, you don't see that same uh, zigzag white pecs showing in the back of the rug because you do not get to see the foundation. The foundation of the rug is not going to be exposed because of the double weft construction. So if you take a look at the back of this rug, which is double wefted, um, you just see the knots and then you're going to see the the weft, but you do not see any of the warp. So you're not getting to look into the spine of the rug in this case. So this type of construction is uh, pretty typical and standard in really finely woven Persian rugs. And especially if they're tightly woven, you can expect if you check at the back of those type of rugs, you're not going to be able to see the warp. And so you won't see the white pecs. It's going to look something like this. So this kind of covers the two different type of uh, constructions when it comes to the weft of the rug. All right, so now that we discussed the foundation of the rug, which is made up of the warp and the weft, let's start talking about the pile of the rug, which is made up of thousands and thousands of knots. So in the Persian rugs and any type of oriented rug, what you're gonna see is when they're hand knotted, that uh, the rug weaver is going to take the material that's uh, going to be for the pile. So let's say it's going to be either wool or it's going to be silk. And um, they're going to turn it into a ball, so a ball of wool. And then they're going to hang that ball of wool over their head. And then they're going to uh, take one end of it and start tying these knots onto the warp of the rug. So they will tie a pair of warp threads as you can see here these are two pairs and then they tie it together with this type of knot right here and then they cut off the knots uh, at, at one end and then these two pairs of the threads of the uh, knots that stick out th this is what makes up the pile so they literally have to go through and do this row by row knot after knot thousands of knots and this is what forms the pile of the rug now let's take a look at a couple of images just to see a little bit more visually how that looks so here's a weaver working on uh, some knots on so he's going through and tying a row of knots into uh, this rug so he literally has to go one knot after another uh, and tie the the warps uh, of the rug together like this and then once he's done tying uh, the entire row He's going to run a weft through the, the warp of the rug and again tie another uh, set of row of uh, knots through the rug. So this is going to happen row after row as he works himself up the rug this way. And that is how the pile of the rug is created. And then we could also see in another image here what that looks like. Another tool that they use is so after they're completed tying uh, one row of knots and weft. They will beat down that row using this beater tool here to compact the pile and make it more dense. So this is an, another tool that they use. Now, now that we have a understanding of how these knots are tied into the foundation of the rug, let's go over the two different types of knots that you'll see in Persian rugs, which is the Turkish knot and the Persian knot. And uh, let's get into that with more details. All right, so now let's get into the two different types of knots that can be used to make a Persian rug. And so again, the knots is what uh, is tied to the foundation of the rug and is what makes up the pile of the rug. And you can see it visually here. So a general uh, rule that we can expect is that depending on where the rug comes from, it's going to have a, a certain type of knot. So for example, if we take a look at this map, I think this map does a pretty good job at uh, visually explaining that. And basically on the northwest of Iran side, if you look at this dotted line, anything 
west of this dotted line, we can expect the Persian rugs that come from this region to have Turkish knot. And then anything east of this line, so central Iran and also eastern Iran, we can have the uh, expect the rugs to have a Persian knot. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule. Uh, there are rugs that come from each of these regions that are uh, opposite of what you would expect. But this is a, a good general rule uh, to keep in mind when it comes to the type of knots that you can expect if you know where the rug comes from. So when you figure out where the rug comes from, you can figure out what type of knots is usually going to be used to make the rug. So now let's go ahead and take a look in more detail of what the actual knots look like. So first we'll start with the Turkish knot. And um, if we want to look at it visually, I think this figure does a really good job at displaying how the Turkish knot looks. So Turkish knot, another name for it is a symmetrical knot. And you can obviously see that this is a this knot is made symmetrically. So one end comes in here uh, and wraps around the warp and then goes back out the same way. So you can see this knot is symmetrical. And then if we look at the Persian knot, you can see immediately that it's different from the Turkish knot in that it's asymmetrical. So one end of the pile or the knot comes through this way, wraps around the warp, and then goes under and comes out this way. So this is asymmetrical. Now, when it comes to the benefits of each type, there are some experts that uh, say that the symmetrical knot, it allows the weavers to create a more exact and more mechanical type of patterns. So you can expect um, a lot of rectilinear and angular type designs uh, from the using the Turkish or symmetrical knot. That's uh, the benefit that you would get from it. And then when it comes to the Persian knot, because it's asymmetrical, this is what some experts say is the linchpin of the exciting and vibrant curvilinear designs that we see in a lot of fine Persian rugs. However, again, like many other things, this is not exactly true. Uh, there are a lot of beautiful floral design and curvilinear design uh, Turkish knot rugs uh, that uh, have just as much uh, intricacies and curvilinear patterns as the ones that are made with the Persian knot and vice versa. So this is uh, something to just notice visually what they look like. So next time you hear a Turkish knot, a symmetrical knot, this is what the actual knot looks like. And then when you hear a Persian knot or asymmetrical knot, this is what that looks like. All right, so now let's briefly go over the edge of the rug, also known as overcasting or the salvage. So how the edge is created is usually with the weft that runs through each row. They're going to wrap that weft around the edge of the rug, the last warp, several times, and they're going to create this more round and uh, cord-like uh, look to it. And depending on which region it, the rug comes from, they have different ways of doing this. Sometimes they'll use a different color of wool to make the edge of the rug more decorative. Sometimes they just use the warp of the rug. Sometimes they'll um, make it flat, so it's not going to have that more round look to it. So this can be done in many different ways. But definitely uh, looking at the edge of the rug is another way that rug experts are able to tell where the rug comes from and what is the origin of the rug. All right, now finally, let's go over the fringe of the rug as well as the killing section. So when it comes to the fringe, the most important thing to note is that the fringe is part of the foundation of the rug. So it's the continuation of the warp. And you can see that it comes through the entire rug and then comes out one end, sticks out, and you're going to expect the same thing on the other end. That's what the fringe is. is the, actually, it's the warp. And when it comes to the killing, this is basically, you could think of it as uh, the weft being used several times at both ends of the rugs. And this is to secure the pile of the rug and just tying things up and give a stronger foundation to the rug uh, for both ends of the rug. And let's take a look at this picture here to visualize it even better. 
So you can see here in this picture that this is the killing section. So it's basically weft being run through several times over and over and creating this kind of uh, more structure and tighter section for the end of the rug. And then here is going to be the fringe. So once the weaver is completed with the rug, they're going to be able to cut the fringe down here. That's what they usually do. They'll cut the fringe and then it's going to stick out this way. And there's also uh, looms that will just disconnect at the bottom. So they don't even need to actually cut it here. It just disconnects and the rest of the fringe will hang. And so it's up to the weavers uh, and how they want to deal with the fringe. Some weavers cut the fringe really short. Some of them leave them very long. Sometimes they like to make them decorative by tying them together and adding other things to the fringe. So there's a lot of different ways the fringe could come out, but basically the fringe of the rug is the foundation of the rug and it's really important component. And uh, you should not cut off the fringe. If anything, um, if you wanted to deal with the fringe or hide it, uh, something that can be done is tying the fringe to the back of the rug, to the killing section, so that way it's not visible. But definitely another major giveaway as to where the rug comes from and what the origin of the rug is. So this concludes our video on how Persian rugs are made. We went over their construction and anatomy, and I really hope that you found some of this information helpful. And if you want to learn more about Persian rugs, about different types of Persian rugs, about their designs, or even more about their construction, then I invite you to head over to our site, catalinarug.com, and you can look up any information there. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, then I invite you to like and subscribe and comment below, and I will see you in the next video.